All right, so I've tried this intro. This is, I think, my fourth time trying this intro. I'm not getting it today. Well, this is the time. Anyways, hi, friends. Welcome back. And for those of you that are new, hi, welcome. My name is Lizbeth, and this is Makeup and Books. And what I do is I do my, if this is something new that I've been trying, and I'm liking it so far. But I try to do my makeup like I, I think a character from the book I'm talking about that day would do if they lived today. Um, or, well, and I mean, some of the books I do really aren't that far off from, like, today, these days, and some of them might be farther off. So, I love books. I love reading. Um, I'll read pretty much anything. I mean, animal books, love them. Like, straight up, just animal, um, like an animal textbook. I will read it. Love it. Um... Science fiction, not such a fan of. I do like fantasy. Uh, I like classics. I like mystery, drama, romance. Yeah, I pretty much science fiction. I think is, and I do tend to lean more towards fiction instead of nonfiction. Um, like I said, I'll, animal books, I'll devour them, and there are, and it, well, it depends on the nonfiction as well, basically. Um, but yeah so that's what I do and also please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button just down there so that you can get notified of future uploads um so today I'm going to talk about um one I'm going to talk about a classic book I feel like honestly for like this week I'm going to be doing a lot of classics it might, it might change, we'll have to see. But for today, I am doing a classic. And also, you guys, I always welcome um, recommendations. If you, if there's a book that uh, you think I should try to do them, um, you think I should do, please let me know. I always love recommendations. And if I've read it, awesome. If not, well, I'll have to read it. Um, shucks. Um, Anyways, so yeah, if you have any recommendations, please let me know. But today I'm going to be doing a classic, and also I do not own any rights to this book. All rights belong to Miss Jane Austen, because I am doing, I think, one of her, and I feel like this is probably one of her, her most well-known and loved book, and that would be Pride and Prejudice. And I mean... It might, I feel like it's probably one of the most well-known and loved. I, I might have to double check that, but I feel like Pride and Prejudice is everywhere. And there's lots of fan fiction about it. And the book, the book is wonderful. There's been multiple um, movies done of Pride and Prejudice. Um... So that's why I say I think it's probably the most well-known book that she's done. But can I tell you a secret? Don't tell anybody. It's not my favorite Jane Austen book. Don't get me wrong. I love the book. I think it is fantastic. I have read the book multiple times. I have seen the movies. Um, I've seen, like, I've seen spin-offs of the movies or movies that, like, are made from, not spin-offs, but... I've seen multiple different variations of the movie. There we go. Um, I love them. I love the books. I love the movies. I have read several. I have read. Sometimes I'll get in a mood and I'll read Jane Austen fan fiction, fan fiction books for a little while. Um, so I do. I do love the book, but it's not my favorite. And I think I'm gonna do my favorite later this week. But, um, and I'm going to do my makeup like I think Lizzie would do. So I don't feel like Lizzie would do her makeup every day. I feel like she'd be off, if she lived today, she'd be off doing all kinds of outdoor things. Um, she loves outdoors. She's very... She's very, what's the word I'm looking for? She's, I feel like 
she's like ahead of her time. You know, I think she would love wearing jeans these days, honestly. Um, one thing I really like about Lizzie is, you know, she's not all about the marriage. She is not out to, she's not out to capture herself a man. You know, if it happens, she wants it to be for love. She's, and I feel like that was, that was not the most common, um, stance in those days. A lot of women, yeah, I mean, you know, being married was security. It was safety because like in her family, you know, her mom, def I feel like her mom 100% went overboard with her whole trying to marry her daughters off. But at the same time, she had a reason, you know, her, their estate, their estate, not in state, estate was entailed. It was not going to go to any of the daughters. So when the father died, it was going to go to the cousin and they, so basically the daughters would be penniless because they, they didn't have, uh, much savings for the um for their girls sure their their estate was nice enough but they weren't super wealthy by any means um and so the mom she drives me nuts a little bit because she's just so consumed with getting her daughters married off but at the same time she wanted to make sure her daughters had some kind, would have some kind of home when the father, um, we know when the estate, when the father would eventually pass away and the estate would go to this cousin. Um, so I mean, was she silly? Was she ridiculous? Oh yes, 100%. But did it come from a good place? Yes. Did she way overdo it? Yes, again. So, I don't, the mom, I don't love the mom. I don't, she's not my favorite character, but I can, I can, I can understand where she's coming from. I'm really glad that these days, well, I don't know, maybe some families these days have to do with the, I don't know, I don't feel like a lot of, I don't feel like they would necessarily, but I'm really glad we live in a time where we don't have to be dependent on men. And we can be independent, you know, we can get jobs, we can get, because back then there wasn't a whole, there, women, there wasn't a whole lot of um, jobs for women. There wasn't a whole lot of respectable careers. I mean, there were jobs, but were they respectable? Most of the time, not so much. Women were expected to stay home. Um, but, so, um, sorry. So, I feel like I always, side note here, so, like, I will practice this in my head before I talk. And... It never comes out exactly how I practice it in my head. Weird, right? Um, anyway, so, you know, women were expected to stay home and keep the home. So, but Lizzie did not, she wasn't just going to go marry the first guy who offered to her just because it was what was expected of her. She wanted, if she was gonna marry, she was gonna marry for love. There was really no other, um, in her mind, there was really no other reason to get married for love. I, well, I mean, honestly, after seeing her parents' marriage, can't really blame her. Um, because they, I don't really like her parents' relationship. I mean, I, and it was probably 
honestly, it was probably a fairly typical relationship. Um, but like I said, the mom bugs me and I don't also, I don't really like, I didn't really like the, uh, Mr. Bennett's approach to the relationship or parenting really. I felt like he was fairly, fairly lackadaisical, fairly, fairly negligent parent, honestly. And sorry to say that, but I mean, he basically just let his wife do whatever. He let his daughters be silly. Um, I mean, Jane and Lizzie were definitely his favorites and they had some more sense, but you know, it took one of his daughters doing something really, really drastic for him to finally realize that, oh man, something's got to change. And so I didn't love that aspect. I don't feel like that's how it should be. And this is the, a lot of these are my personal opinions, guys. But that's how I feel. I, so I don't know. I didn't, so yeah, in that case, I didn't love Mr. Bennett. Um, I know Lizzie adored him. And he, he was a good father. I feel like he was a fairly good father to her and Jane. But I feel like he just, otherwise he just dropped the ball. I mean, I, his, yeah, his wife was annoying. And, but he didn't work at the relationship either. Anyway, so off of that soapbox. <laughs> and what was I going to say? Oh, I think I started saying something earlier and then I just, I went off on another tangent, but I feel like if Lizzie lived these days, she wouldn't do her makeup every day. She'd be out off too busy visiting with friends, being outdoors, doing whatever she wanted. You, I'm sure she, she probably would be working. But when she did do her makeup, I feel like she, she'd, want, she'd want to do it good. She'd want to make it fairly bold and looking good. Like if she went to a, a party or a dance or whatever. We don't really have balls. Well, actually, I guess sometimes there are certain, there's dances, there's balls these days. Not like back then. Also, can I tell you another secret? I secretly always wanted to find a ball where they, and dress up like they did in, um, back then with the dresses and everything. I just, I think that would be so fun. But yeah, I think that would be super fun. Maybe one day I'll have to bug the hubby into finding one. If they do, if they do anything like that anymore, I would. They might have a Jane Jane Austen ball or something. I'll have to look that up. But if you ever let me, know, if anybody knows, let me know. Um. Anyways, so, I mean, will it ever happen? Yeah, probably not. But I think it would be fun. Anyway, so. Let's talk about Mr. Darcy for a second too. So can I tell you, I feel like I actually, I feel like I sympathize, I sympathize with Mr. Darcy actually a little more than I do with Lizzie. Don't get me wrong. I love Lizzie's character. I love that she's headstrong. She's, um, she's gonna, she's gonna do things. She's gonna figure it out. But... So Lizzie and Mr. Darcy did not have the best um, introduction, for sure. And I, I sympathize with that. I, I get that. I feel like Mr. Darcy, was he proud? Yeah, he was a little bit proud. You know, he came from, and he lived in a time that was okay. He comes from, he comes from man, money. That's okay. You know, he has the, he has the pride that comes from money. But I feel like he was also pretty shy and probably 
more than a little bit socially awkward. I understand that. Um, I may or may not be socially awkward myself sometimes. If you ask my husband, he will be more than happy to tell you. But, um, and I mean, because I mean, when they met, he said something and, you know, he maybe he wasn't in the greatest mood when he said that and he didn't. So he didn't really think about his surroundings, where he might have been, you know, who might have heard, who could hear him. I've done that. A long time, uh, it was a long time ago. And you, I, I still feel guilty about this. Like, I hope the person has forgotten, but and I mean, I don't beat myself up over it every day, but when I do think about it and think about this story made me think about it, I feel guilty about it. Um, we, I, it was in high school and our friends, I was talking to some friends about something we were doing later that night or later that week. And I said something really unkind about somebody, somebody who in no way deserved the comment that I said. And I didn't realize this, but that person was like right behind me. I know they heard me. They, I don't think they ever said anything about it, but I know they heard me and I know it couldn't have been fun to hear. And I sincerely, sincerely wish I would not have said that because there was no reason for it. I don't even remember why I said it. I don't remember if I was in a bad mood or if I was just trying to make myself look cool or whatever. But there was no excuse for what I said. And if I could take it back, I would in a heartbeat. I don't, I don't think me and this person ever talked about it. Um, but I will never not feel bad about that. You know, it's just one of those things like, crap, if I could go back and change that, I would. And I mean, I'm sure that I've had other, I'm, you know, I'm positive that I've had other moments where I've accidentally stuck my foot in my mouth. So if I have ever stuck my foot in my mouth around you. Or said in something to inadvertently offend you. I am so, 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 so sorry. Um, I probably don't have a good excuse for it. But I am very sorry. Besides being a little social awkward. I mean, not that that's an excuse. But I am, I am truly sorry if I have ever inadvertently offended you. My bad. But yeah, so, you know, Mr. Darcy, I feel, so I feel like he was just, he was socially awkward. Um, yeah, prideful a little bit. He comes from the money. He's back then, you know, he had, he had the right to have some pride, to be prideful. I think it was expected that if you come from money, you're, you're higher class. But still, he, he made a bad call on saying that, on saying something that uh, Lizzie overheard. And he, but I like, you know, when they say that when he says his good judgment once lost is gone forever, I feel like he's also... He's pretty careful to um, not let that happen too often. Like, I feel like he keeps giving people chances and chances and chances until they finally just burn that very last bridge. Sorry if my drinking is ever super loud, I'm trying not to make it, but...
look how dark this bronzer is. Um, where was I going? Anyway, sorry. Lost my train of thought there for a sec. So, yeah, you know, I... And, you know, um, and Mr. Darcy he kept giving Mr. Wickham a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of chances, you know. He kept, I think he felt, he kept wanting to believe that Wickham could change, that he would be better. It wasn't until Wickham had the ultimate betrayal that Darcy really was really done with him. And, I mean, he hadn't had a whole lot to do with him before the ultimate betrayal um, for a little while, just because I think he realized that Wickham probably wasn't going to change, but maybe he still had a little bit of hope until Wickham decided he needed to go run off with his sister. And you can't really, I don't know, you really can't blame Darcy for being super upset at the fact that Wickham would run off with his 16-year-old sister which she's just a kid no no she was she was 15 when he tried to run away with her yeah so yeah i feel like his reaction would totally warrants that fortunately wickham is just better with the crowd so he had he was able to fool everybody because Wickham was charismatic and he's got, he can, he knows how to work a story where Wickham is all, Wickham's all talk. He's fake. He's fake as anything. You know, he's gonna, he's a master manipulator where Darcy very much is not. Darcy is who he is. You get what you see with him. And, again, I feel like that makes people a little uncomfortable sometimes, too. Just someone just truly being themselves. And, what was I going to do? That was what I was going to do. I feel like I'm doing more talking than makeup today, but, um, but I feel like that also maybe puts people off a little bit sometimes. I'm not saying that, you know, I don't know how to say that. Just someone who is, um, unapologetically real, just, or who just is themselves. Uh, maybe that's, a little I'm gonna stop going down that road because I don't actually know where I was trying to go with that I think um Darcy wasn't gonna perform for a crowd where Wickham was more than willing to perform for a crowd and give them what they wanted and what they wanted was somebody charming and or what, you know, some, they gave him somebody charming and just wonderful who had an oh so sad woe is me story. This poor man. And oh, well, obviously Darcy had not endeared himself to the neighborhood. Because, um, yeah, he was proud. He was standoffish, again, socially awkward. But, so he hadn't endeared himself to the neighborhood. So it was easier for these people to sympathize with Wickham the evil, what the, for what the evil Darcy had done. Because Darcy hadn't really given them, hadn't shown the himself in the best light. I understand that too. So really, I feel like I just, I really, I sympathize with Darcy. <laughs> I do. I, I sympathize with him.
Ja. What was I saying? Um, anyway, so can I tell you, I have a hard time reading or watching the proposal scene. I struggle with that. Like the first proposal scene, it's cringy to me. Like it hurt. It is. I kind of skim it when I read it because it hurts a little bit. It's very, you know, Lizzie still has the wrong perception of him because he hasn't, again, the man has not shown himself in the best light, but he doesn't have this super charismatic skill set. Once you get to know him, you know, you find out why his friends are so loyal to him, but he doesn't paint himself in the best light. But yeah, so that, and then, but honestly, I mean, if I was in Lizzie's shoes and someone I didn't like, because I believed somebody else's lies about him and who hadn't given me a whole lot of reason to like him. Because, let's face it, he didn't give him a whole lot of, he didn't give her a whole lot of reason to like him. I mean, he was just, he stared at her all the time and, but with his scowl on his face and who thinks that says, oh, I love you. I wouldn't. Um... But, and he, you know, he'd never really, he'd never tried to spend time with her, really. Um, okay, no, no, he did a few times, but they were, for someone like Lizzie, she's more, she's more outgoing. She's more, she's just more, she's not going to keep it super, super close to the vest like Darcy does. She's more outgoing. She's, she wants to know where she stands with people she wants and she's going to tell you where she stands with you or where you stand with her but Darcy keeps things closer to home he has a hard time making friends making relationships so he so for someone like him it was Oh, and Lizzie has the, also has the bad opinion of him because she found out about him meddling in Jane and Bingley's relationship, which I know that was rather badly done. Probably should have left that alone. I mean, you can understand his, um, his concern because I feel like Jane, I don't know, you know, I feel like he and Jane they might understand each other. I feel like they would probably, they pro if they got to know each other, they'd probably understand each other a little bit. Because I feel like Jane also likes to keep her emotions pretty close to the vest. She's not as outgoing as Lizzie is either. Um, I don't think Jane and Darcy would go well together. But I feel like they could probably be friends. Um, and, but, so, you know, Lizzie already has this, she has this bad impression of him from back home. She has this bad impression of him because she meddled in her, he meddled in her favorite sister's relationship, broke her heart. Or caused her heart to be broken. So, yeah. He's got a lot of strikes against him right now. And he did not. And Lizzie's. I 
feel like she's, you know, since she's got the more open and congenial attitude, she feels like everybody should have a more open and congenial attitude. And she doesn't really understand that Darcy's probably more than a little bit shy and more than a little bit socially awkward. I don't actually think this was a turn back then, but... So she's she's not understanding that. And so for all of a sudden him to be like, I love you. Whoa. You know, there was no courting. There was no nothing to show her that he loved her. And I feel like she's someone who definitely needs, she needs to be shown that somebody loves her. Um, not just have it sprung on her randomly. Especially to someone she feels she hasn't really nothing in common with. Hasn't spent any time with, really. I mean, they saw each other at the... They'd see each other when they were residing in... Um, when Darcy and Bingley and them were residing in Hertfordshire. And when... After Jane got sick and when Lizzie spent all the... And they had to spend the extra time at um, Bingley's house... Yeah, they saw each other all the time, but it was never anything romantic. And, I mean, after Lizzie seeing her parents' relationship, you can't blame her for wanting some difference. Because I wouldn't want that either. That would be terrible. That would be a terrible relationship. So, you know, she wants... She wants the big gestures. Um, honestly, Darcy springing the proposal on him that on her that was a pretty big gesture. Just wrong time, bad timing. Um, so I think I've mentioned this before, but I'm I'm kind of going all over the place a little bit right now. Sorry, um, but. When something's in my head, sometimes it's, it's just got to come out of my mouth. And I, anyway, so. Also, let's talk about Colonel Fitzwilliam for a minute. I feel like he uh, was, so I feel like he was underappreciated. I actually quite liked his character. But. I feel like he is kind of an underappreciated character. Sometimes I've wondered what would how it would be if he and Lizzie got together. I mean, I love that she got together with Darcy. I honestly wouldn't put her with anybody else. But I've thought about it a couple of times, you know? What would happen if they had gotten together? All right. Um, yeah, we're gonna go with this today. Sorry, hold on. All right. So. In conclusion. I... In conclusion, in just a second. Oh, I wanted to do that too. Just kidding, I lied. Not in conclusion yet. But, so you know, I don't, I don't like that first proposal. That, that one is hard for me to 
watch or read or anything. It's that's a challenge for me. I feel sincerely bad for Darcy and it's just uh, I feel bad for Lizzie too. It's just it's badly done all around, honestly. It really is. But so um it's just it's badly done all around. What was I going to say? That's what else I wanted to do. So, but anyway, so, but once they get together, I, I love them together. I think that they have every chance of having an awesome relationship. Um, I think that they will be, I think they'd make, they make an awesome couple and I, cause once they get everything figured out, you know, they, they have the world ahead of them. Lizzie can help Darcy be a little, get out of his shell a little bit more. Um, Darcy can help Lizzie maybe see the world a little differently. Um, but yeah, I just, and there's so many other things that they could do together. Well, I mean, Darcy has his money, so, and Lizzie loves to travel. So really that's, open, and I'm not saying she should marry him for his money because she shouldn't, but uh, honestly, that was a big, that was a big consideration back then, of course. And I know I'm doing my makeup like she would today, but I feel like just talking, I'm, I feel like, okay, so I feel like I'm not going to try and bring them into this world that much except for how I'm doing my makeup because you can't, the book, the story is awesome just in the time period where it is. Um, and so I feel like I'm, may, when I do these, maybe I'll, I'll do my makeup like, I think they would do today, but also just kind of talk about how I feel the book went and my opinions on the book. But yeah. Anyway, so I think I'm done. Wait. No, I did once. Um, no, I'm gonna leave it alone. There we go. Hold on. Maybe a little more buffing. Buffing, buff that in. Do the skin. Sorry. Anyway, so I love Pride and Prejudice. I do. It is not, like I said, it's not my favorite. But it is not my favorite Jade Austen book. But I do love it. Anyway, I think this is how Lizzie would do her makeup. She'd keep it fairly simple, but at the same, she'd keep it fairly simple, but maybe one on either a bolder eye or a bolder lip. I feel like I went bolder on the lips this time because she, she is a very bold character. That's for sure. She's gonna, she's gonna go places. She's gonna change the world. If she has the chance, I truly believe that she will, ch that if she had the chance, she would change the world. Um, and who doesn't, and you gotta love her and Darcy's relationship once they get it figured out. They're so cute. And I know I've said this before, but I like the 2000, in the movies, I like the 2007 version better. Please, please don't get angry at me. Um. Well, I mean, if you want to, that's, that's your right. But, um, that's, that's my opinion. I like the 2007 version better. I feel like they, I don't know. I feel like those characters just have a little more chemistry. Not that they don't in the Colin Firth version, but I don't know. I just feel like in the 2000, they've got a little more chemistry. So I like them better a little bit together. Um, 
And I know that the Colin Firth version folk stays a little closer to the book, but I don't know. I just, I like the 2007 version. Love the book. Um, and anyway, I think that's it. Thank you for hanging out with me while I rambled on about Pride and Prejudice because let's raise it. I did ramble a lot, but um, I had fun talking about it. Oh, go. I think I like this book, this look a little bit better with the natural light as opposed to the LED lights today. I mean, it's not terrible with the LED lights, but I feel like I just, I like it the natural light a little better. But here we go. There we go. And anyway, so please feel free to let me know what you think. And again, if you have any recommendations for books you think I should do, please let me know. I always love to hear recommendations. Um, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Please remember to treat everyone with kindness and respect. Everyone has a story and we don't know what it is. And I hope, oh, and I also hope you had a great Valentine's Day yesterday. And so, again, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you tomorrow. Oh, and also, I have been so bad about editing this past week. I, I have a love-hate relationship with editing. I, it's fun to do sometimes, but then again, it gets, it's time-consuming, and sometimes it's a little boring. So... But I'm working on it. I'm going to try and get better at it this week. I have one more video I need to post from last week. And then this one. And I'll be all cut up. So I think I'm going to do that today. And anyways. I'm going to stop rambling now. Have an awesome rest of your day. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.